Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and today we are going to be recreating a vintage restaurant piece, this bread rack, off of a photo we found on the internet. Check it out. So this project's gonna start with some one and a quarter inch steel tubing. Now, this whole thing is based around some photographs that my friend Chelsea found online while we fit out her new restaurant that she's opening up in the next month. She had found this vintage bread rack on a, I think an auction website, and she handed it over to me to say, hey, you know, I want something like this that'll fit in my space. I ordered some inch and a quarter tubing, and I'm gonna be bending it with this Rogue Fab tubing bender. Now, this is a piece that I bought last year without really having a, a purpose for a bender like this, but just sort of knowing that having one of these in my shop would expand my capabilities. And that's something that I talk about all the time is like having the right tools so that when the right job comes up, you're not scrambling to, you know, find the tools on a short notice or borrow tools or anything like that. So I had the money, I invested into this bender and it's already paid off. Now, what you'll see me doing here is I'm putting these aluminum blocks on my tubing. Now, this is very unique about the Rogue Fab tubing bender is that you've got these sort of bending blocks, uh, die blocks, I think they're called. And what they allow you to do is recreate bends if you leave the blocks in place. And it really makes bending tubing like this super simple, which I appreciate because this is the first time I've ever really had to bend tubing for a project like this where, the, where I have to make something that's consistent multiple times. So I'm bending these sections two at a time, two bends on each piece of tubing. And then those pieces of tubing need to go together. In the end, I'll have four bent pieces on each section of the rack. Those get welded together and then they have to be perfectly identical so that when the rack is together, there's no wobble or any shake in it. So here's just a little shot of the bender in action. You can see there's a big die in there and then the bending block on the outside. And it really easily pulls the tubing around uh, using a hydraulic cylinder that was put on it by the guy that I bought it from. If you're interested in this bender, you can check out the link down below. Um, like I said, I bought this one. I don't have any association with this company, but overall the product seems really good. And for someone that had never been tubing like this, it came out right. So I guess it's easy to use. Moving over into the metal shop, I'm gonna lay this tubing out on my fixture table and I'm gonna use some blocks to properly measure off of the edge of that curve and cut it with the porter band. Now the critical dimension here is actually the width of this rack because it has to fit in a very specific place behind the counter at her restaurant. So it's very important that I cut the tubing down to the right size so that when this thing is assembled, it's gonna fit. You notice there I have a smaller piece of tubing that I'm going to telescope inside the actual bent frame and that's going to act as a bung which is going to give me some extra strength and make the alignment of this piece that much easier. Once I get it laid out I can put some pins in my fixture table and I can clamp this thing down to start to weld it. This is a Build Pro Max table from Stronghand. I really like it and there's just so many little features about using a table with uh, registration holes like this that make working so much easier. I save so much time in my measuring or lack of measuring by using a table like this. And I can't tell you how much it's changed the way that I work. So if you're doing this kind of fab work, getting a fixture table of any kind is going to help you. It's worth the investment. So I tack from one side, I flip it over, and then I weld on the other side to make sure that I get minimal warping. You can see I'm using hold downs everywhere that I can because I don't want this thing to twist anymore uh, and get out of alignment. It's very important that these pieces wind up being parallel. Now my bends weren't exactly 90 degrees, they were actually a little bit over 90 degrees. So I had to do a little bit of modification and sort of uh, pushing when I was going to weld the second frame together. What I do though to check that is I make sure to put the first frame on it and try to make this one match it perfectly. You can see I'm using what's uh, called a little stock pusher there from Stronghand that pops into the table and allows me to force material over just to make sure that it's totally lined up correctly. Once it's tacked, I can fully weld it, and then I'll have these two frame pieces done. Now I need to grind this tube so that it's seamless. So I start with a fresh flap disc to get some of those major welds down. And then I'm using what's called a pipe polishing tool to get around that piece of tubing and grind it down to make it really flat and smooth. Now this is just a cheap one that I got on Amazon. It works great, and I'm just using a 60 grit and then a 120 grit sanding belt to wrap around that piece of tubing to grind it flat. And here you can see a little close up of what I'm doing. So I'm using a 40 grit flap disc to get rid of the major weld. 
and then using the pipe polisher to hook around that and make it look really, really smooth and seamless. Hit it with a little bit of scotch Bright too, and then once it's painted, you, can, you can't even tell that these pieces of tubing were welded together. Now for the shelves, I'm gonna use inch and a half by eighth inch thick angle, and I'm just gonna chop these up real quick on the bandsaw and make sure that they're all the exact same length so that I can line them all up and weld them in. Now one of the things I need to make sure of too is that the depth of this thing is consistent. So I make some quick blocks over in the wood shop and then I use some clamps to clamp this thing together on the bottom and the top while also using the, some of the fixture blocks on the table to make sure that everything is lined up and parallel and not skewed. I really like using wooden blocks for things like this because I can make a very specific size, just make them out of two by fours. And I know some people get crazy when you're you know, using wood in a welding environment, thinking that the wood's gonna catch on fire. Um, in all my experience, I've never lit a piece of two by four or plywood jig on fire. You really have to concentrate sparks onto a piece of wood like that to get it to ignite. That being said, you wanna be careful. I'm using a three, four, five framing square here just to check that it's square off the table. And then once everything is jigged up, I can start to weld in my angle using some more two by four blocks to make sure that my spacing off of the floor is correct. Again, using two by fours is a really cheap and easy way to get consistent layout, especially when it's a unique size. I think this was like seven and five eighths off of the deck. So to try to make that out of metal shims, it doesn't really make sense to try to make four of those when you could just chop up one two by four, make a couple blocks and move quickly through the project. I wanted a consistent height between my shelves. So again, using the wood blocks and just tacking these pieces in place with two welds on each side so that I can get all my layout done vertically like this. And then I can move on and finish weld it on its side. I didn't want to fully weld these yet because I didn't want to introduce too much heat or do any warping. And also if I had to skew this thing back, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't a huge weld on there for me to cut and have to try to get out of the way. And you can see my fume extractor up overhead, just getting some of that smoke out of the air. Once I'm done with the shelf supports, I weld two pieces of three inch by eighth inch angle across the bottom, and those are gonna hold my casters. For this project, I'm using a Lincoln PowerMig 360 MP. It's a great multi-purpose welder. It handles this eighth inch with ease, and uh, I just really like using it super smooth and consistent welds across any material, thick or thin. I brought the piece down onto the ground to check its scale and then back up onto the table so that I could weld those pieces of angle in fully on the sides and then grind them out. Now for this, I'm just trying to burn my welds in so that they'll be nice and smooth once I grind them. And it's really easy to do by just kind of running around this piece, spinning it and flipping it as needed. So to add the caster to the bottom of this, I wanted to make sure that I bolted them or threaded them on. Sometimes you can weld casters to a piece, but with this one going into a restaurant setting, I wasn't sure how these casters were gonna hold up. And if I welded them on there, it'd be really difficult for me to replace them. So I actually drilled and tapped on one side where I had two layers of the tubing and the plate and enough grab for a quarter 20 screw. And then I drilled and bolted through the eighth inch material on the other side of the caster. Now this just gives a really clean look and it's totally serviceable. So if these casters wind up being too big or too small or one of them fails, I don't have to worry about you know trying to take this thing back to my shop and grind away the welds um, or do any of that stuff. Plus I found sometimes when you weld casters on, sometimes you can melt some of the plastic bushings inside the caster, which always affects the performance. So now that the casters were welded on, I can go ahead and grind out all those welds. And I put on my powered respirator just because I'm putting a lot of grinding dust in the air and I'm trying to protect my lungs. And that helps a lot. So I always talk about using good consumables when you're working on a project. I have been using one flap disc this entire time. This is a polyfan power from Faird um, and it's clearly worn down, but I was able to do all that grinding without having to go and get another consumable. So even if this is a $5 flap disc 
or a $6 flap disc or a $10 flap disc. Not having to change it and staying consistent with my grinding with just using one makes a big difference and kept me moving fast and efficiently. And there's still some life left on this thing. So buy good stuff. Once that grinding was completed, I could take this thing down off the table, do a little bit of cleanup in the metal shop and then bring it over into the other room so I could get some primer on it. Now it's really important to clean metal pieces like this when they get from like the distributor or mill, they usually have a lot of oil on them and you want that primer to stick. And for this application, I'm using Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer, which is a white base. Um, and this thing will be white when it's done. So that's just sort of a good base coat to use. It sticks really well to clean metal like this and it's pretty easy to apply. I'm just putting it on with a roller and brush and making sure to cover all the bare metal so that my top coat will stick really well to it. This is the warmest room in my shop, so it's important that that metal, you know, kind of warm up and that paint be allowed to dry. While the paint's drying, I'm checking the size of my shelves so I can head into the wood shop and make the wooden shelves. For this, I'm using 1x4 pine that I got from Home Depot, and I set up some stop blocks because I'm going to be making seven shelves that are all the same size, and each one of them uses a good bit of material. I want to get through the process as quickly as possible, so using my uh, miter saw station, I set up and cut everything down quickly so that I can get my stacks of material together. Now there's going to be bread on these shelves, so I don't want there to be any visible nail holes on top that any bacteria could get into. So I'm really careful to do all my nailing from the bottom. I'm setting my layout before I nail my first piece, and then I'm going to be using this cordless Milwaukee 18 gauge bread nailer to nail this stuff off. Now if you've watched my other videos, you've seen me use cordless brad nailers before. Um, I've had the Ryobi ones for like four or five years and they're pretty good, but upgrading to this Milwaukee one has really made a difference. It is so much faster and stronger than the other ones that I've used in the past. And if you're still using a regular pneumatic brad nailer, you got to step into the 21st century because not having a hose or a cord or listening to a compressor is life-changing. Um, so I'm doing a four nail configuration with a spacer block in between and some type on three to make sure these things are super strong. And I'm using inch and a quarter, 18 gauge brad nails to get this thing assembled. Using that spacer block is a quick way to do this layout even though it's upside down. And I'm just using my fingertips to check my spacing off the sides to make all these little kind of mini pallet shelves look great. When they're done, I can do a little bit of sanding, stack them up and keep going. So having to make seven of these, it's important to get a good system down so that you can build them fast. So I have a square, my blocks, one clamp to hold it down, and I can bang through seven of these in about 20 minutes. Once they're done, I go in with a 180 grit sanding paper and I just ease all the edges, clean the top and bottoms, and make sure they're nice and smooth so no splinters catch in any of the food. For the finish, I'm using a white mineral oil, which doesn't go rancid or ever go bad. It is a good kind of butcher block style finish that you can apply and is really easily serviceable by Chelsea at the restaurant or her staff in the future. So I started out with a foam roller. It didn't work great. And I went to a stain applicating pad and got these things really well coated and then put them on the shelves so that they could dry in the warm machine shop in my place. Just checking to make sure they all look good. And this thing is ready to get brought over to the restaurant. So that's the location it's going to be, and there's also going to be some other racks next to it, so that's why it was important for it to be these specific dimensions. And the white and pine motif in her restaurant just really looks beautiful, and this thing is going to look amazing. Can't wait to see it filled up with loaves of bread and, you know, watch it get used and distressed over the years. All right, that about does it for this video. You can see how well this thing ties in inside this space. I'm super happy with how it came out and Chelsea is thrilled of the way it looks. So she had originally found that photo of the bread rack that I showed at the beginning of the video online. It was something that I think was available at an auction, but it was a little bit too big for the space and obviously it was pretty old. So kind of getting a vintage piece like that in what is a brand new restaurant 
there's a lot of risk. So if the thing fell apart, if it didn't fit, there was really nothing we were gonna be able to do. So her and I set out to design this one. It's sized for her space so that it can work with her existing countertop depths and get in and out. Um, and I made all the shelves still removable so that her staff can take it out and clean them and whatever. Um, I'm super happy with how it came out. It was my first experience using that tubing bender. And overall, I think the design is really sexy and looks great. So I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and check out Chelsea's restaurant right here, Flourish Bake Shop and All Day Cafe. I built a bunch of other stuff for this place as well, like the skylight planters and the planters that run around the perimeter of the restaurant. And those videos will come out in the future once she gets them filled with plants because I really want to show you the design intent of those uh, once they're fully being utilized. So definitely check out her place. It should be opening soon. And it's in Glenhead, New York on Long Island. It's going to be amazing. She's an unbelievable baker. She actually made my wedding cake, which was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. So check her out. And don't forget to thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, more videos in the shop, making cool stuff. I'm super excited to get started on my project list for this year. We've got a lot of great stuff coming, and I can't wait to get it moving. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here on Instagram, at Make Everything Shop. I post pretty much every day. I share a lot of behind-the-scenes footage. I shared a lot of stuff that was going on with this while I was building it, problems I came up with along the way and how I solve them. So you should check that out if you're interested. Again, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you on the next one and hopefully see you at Flourish.